When this video was recorded, we were having ice and snow, really mainly ice, not that much snow, but we were having a pretty good winter weather. It was very cold outside and everything was pretty much shut down. There was hardly anything open. There was nowhere you could go if you can even get your car anywhere because the roads were so bad. And so we started running out of things, and we had um, almost a whole week of Bryant being home with us, too, because they couldn't go out and do anything for work. And so we started running out, well, we did completely run out of all-purpose flour, which is what I'm used to using for my bread. I do half the fresh ground einkorn and half of the all-purpose flour. Um, my chickens were not laying a lot of eggs, which most of my chickens are younger. They just started laying this month, and so they're not real consistent with their laying yet. So we had a few eggs, but we weren't getting them super consistently, in big batches anyways. So we were having to use those sparingly, and then we did run out of juice. Now juice is not that important, but I do give the kids juice in the morning and evening, very little bit, and that's what I use to hide their vitamins in. So I'll put a little bit of juice in a cup, I'll mix their vitamins in it, and then that's how they take it. So I, I was seeing how we're running out of these things. Like, I mean, these are kind of like staple things in our house. And it made me very glad that I bought things in bulk. Because for times like this, like... We couldn't get out anywhere. There was nothing open. If, you know, you did happen to find a grocery store open or, or something open, they had very bare shelves. And so having everything in bulk, buying in bulk, I had what I needed on hand. I didn't have juice, but I had plenty of apples still in our refrigerator. And we still had electricity, so I could have used a juicer and juice some apples and had apple juice. They would have drank that just fine. Um, so I didn't have to do that because actually my neighbor ended up going to work only to find out when she got there that they had closed for the day and she didn't get the text message. So she called me and said, hey, I'm here. I'm across from the grocery store. Do you need anything? So she did pick up some juice for me, which was very nice. So I was able to save my apples. I didn't have to juice them. But if I did need juice, I always had that as backup. The eggs, I mean, we are, you know, we are still relying on the chickens, so we would just have to use the eggs very sparingly and uh, change a few things that I was going to do, um, you know, substitute things, whatever we need to do to try to get around the egg situation. And not having all-purpose flour, I was like, okay, we're out of bread. How am I supposed to make my bread, you know, because I need the all-purpose flour? Well, I remembered I have hard white wheat berries, soft white wheat berries, and einkorn all in the garage. I have them in the five gallon containers all in the garage. And I, using the einkorn is nothing new to me. That's what I do anyways. But I wasn't sure about the other portion of the flour in the bread recipe being the hard white wheat. Now, if you're not familiar with soft white wheat versus hard white wheat, if you're making bread, you want the hard. If you're making more like cookies, you want the soft. So I said, well, you know what? We need bread. I'm going to grind this up, which is what I was doing in the beginning of this video, and we're going to see what happens. So I did with my recipe, I did half of the fresh ground einkorn and half of the fresh ground hard white wheat. And so I doubled the recipe in this video but I'm going to tell you my original recipe that makes one single large loaf or two smaller loaves. And it is two teaspoons of active dry yeast, one third cup of warm water, baby bottle temp, not too warm, one to two tablespoons of sweetener. I use honey so that kind of I have to adjust my flour ratio with that because honey is and added moisture to it and so sometimes I have to add a little bit more flour. If you're using just sugar it's probably not going to mess with your um, flour ratio at all. And then one to two tablespoons of butter. Depending on how much butter you put if you like your bread buttery if you put more butter that might you might have to add a little bit more flour too but you can always figure that out during the mixing process. And so I put all of that with the warm water in the bowl get my yeast nice and happy since the honey was really cold, it was 
pretty solid, pretty hard, so I get my honey nice and melted. And then I added, the recipe is total, you want 420 grams of flour. So I did half of that with the einkorn, half of that with the hard white wheat. Now, the fresh ground flour, when I go to mix this, it does take longer to absorb moisture than, it, than the all-purpose flour does. So I know while I'm mixing this that this is going to need a little bit more time to rest before I know if I need to add a, a little bit more to it because it, it, it needs, that, it needs a, at least an hour to rest and absorb that and not be too sticky. So before I mix it, I do add it's 6 grams of salt, and I do use the Redmond's Real Salt, and then one large egg. So I'm mixing this. It is pretty sticky for a good bit. I mixed it about, oh, I don't know, about maybe 20, 25 minutes. It did finally, it takes a little longer with a fresh ground flour to get the kind of dough you're looking for. It finally did get that smooth, silky texture. It was still sticky on my fingers, but when I stretched it, it didn't just break. It did have a good stretch to it. So I knew the gluten was okay in it. And I did add just... I don't know, maybe a tablespoon more flour um, to it. And so then I decide, since it was a nice texture and everything, even though it's still sticky, it was a nice texture, I went ahead and I just got it covered up. And so I let it set for about, it was about an hour and a half because it's pretty cold in the house. So about an hour and a half, I let it set, let it double. And then I made sure I had my uh, hands nice and greased with some coconut oil. It's what I use. You can use whatever you feel like. And um, I started fooling with it. It was still kind of sticky. It did still have a good moisture to it, but it was okay. I went ahead and I made the loaves with it. Once I got the loaves in the, in the loaf pans, I let them sit. It was probably close to another, well, I don't want to say two hours. Probably what really wasn't quite two hours, maybe an hour and a half. Hour to hour and a half. It sat on top of the stove, um, doubling in size again. And I didn't even let it quite double. Like, I, I, I just let it rise a little bit. And then um, once it got to where I was happy with, I put them in the oven that was preheated to 355 degrees Fahrenheit. And I baked it for 30 minutes. Once it was done baking, I took them out of the pan, dumped them out onto a cooling rack, and let them cool on top of the cooling rack. And my family didn't even flinch like they didn't even notice a difference and which makes me feel really good because i have been wanting to get away from all-purpose flour and wanting to use just the fresh ground wheat and so now that i know that they like this this is now my new sandwich bread and i don't use all-purpose flour for it i do still keep all-purpose flour in the house uh, because there are some things i still want to use it for but uh, as far as our bread, which we do eat a lot of, between this bread and the sourdough, I, uh, I am making it with all of the fresh ground wheat berries, and I am really excited to be able to do that. <laughs>